Baker is so well liked and so adept at managing controversies, media and otherwise, that that's why they're both here. And now, Moogie Betts. The Athletic reports that the Dodgers are engaged with the Red Sox about a trade involving Betts. You in on him being the piece the Dodgers need. So need is the word I object to here. They don't need him to be like a World Series contender, but they want him. And what's infuriating to me, if I'm a Red Sox fan, is that the Dodgers want him but don't need him. The Red Sox need him but don't want him, and that seems to be entirely because... They don't want to spend all that money. Yeah, and I guess that they're on a reset in what they're trying to do. Now, for the Dodgers, they won 106 games last year. They lost to the Nationals in the first round, but it was not really for a lack of pieces that caused them the problem. What they are, though, is Yankees West. And, in fact, it's not even Yankees West. They're just the Dodgers because the Yankees don't spend money like that. They've got all the money in the world. Therefore, if they want to spend it to get another good player in a sport with no cap, Feel free. Knock yourself out. An MVP, maybe. All right. Coming up next, are you buying the Pacers as contenders? All right. If you'll direct your attention to this screen, this gentleman on the left is named Bobby Schmurter. This dude on the right is Reggie Jackson. (laughs) He was a rapper for a couple weeks before a lot of stuff happened. Anyway... Let's go to the, uh, the the Nets game against the Pistons. Yeah. Garrett Temple, who was bleeding a moment ago. Cass, and that's the crowd chanting Bobby yeah, Schmurter. Garrett, he received <laughs> stitches above his And hold on, hold on, wait for it, wait for it. return to tonight's game, guys. Mm. Reggie Jackson goes shoot this free throw. Now do it, now do it, now do it. There we yeah, go. There he is. did the Bobby Schmurter dance right there. You got to lean in on it, baby. You can't do nothing about it. He does have a kind of stunning resemblance. But Nets fans, man, congratulations on doing something interesting. Like, I didn't think Brooklyn really had any distinguishing characteristics. But now they have this. You lived in Brooklyn for years. I was a top 100 influencer, according to Brooklyn Magazine. <laughs> They've got terrible research. Quote, When something goes wrong, who takes responsibility? Their answer, well, that's what the data told us. What a crock. That's what got him one in 31. Said former Packers GM Ron Wolf about the Browns' analytics-heavy approach to building their team, adding that other teams that embrace analytics are, quote, out of control. Pablo, is he right? So, no, for one thing. But as a narrator in this story, like, Ron Wolf, super respected dude, but his son Elliot was just let go from this organization in question. So that's a filter to hear all of his comments through. But the other thing, man, in terms of out of control, like, who are some teams that are really into analytics in the NFL? Well, the Chiefs are into it. The Niners are into it. The Patriots are into it. The Eagles are into it. The Falcons are into it. The Falcons, you just, wow, you just undercut everything with one word. Those are the last four participants in the last four Super Bowls, man. Yes, 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 yes. I say the Falcons are doing it, so we gonna do it. Ain't never an explanation. I got completely derailed from what I was thinking. Because I got no problem with the idea of including these analytics in what you're doing. I think they have a place. I also think, though, there is still a great value in what human eyes can see and observe that gets discounted. But I just, I just want to say this for you. No matter what. I remember when the Hawks drafted Trey Young, and somebody made a great point because they made that trade and gave Dodgers away. That that implied that the Hawks knew something nobody else knew, and they've never known anything that nobody else knew, and the same applies to the Falcons. That whole thing is contagious in that area of town. You know, you talk about how you're off the narcotics yes. of the Falcons. Yes, yes, and that's what I and when I see people who start shooting up with the same narcotic, <laughs> I come in and I try to help them. But that one Super Bowl, man, it felt good. You got to admit the veins. It felt good. No, they didn't because I'm off it. Why don't you listen when I talk? It's a lot to listen to. Next quote. I'm confident a new contract is coming. I'm confident in the Cowboys that something will get done. Said Dak Prescott to Sage Steele. So, Bomani, are you as confident as Dak that a new contract from the Cowboys is coming soon? Yeah, because I just don't think they have any other choice. Like, they can try to walk this down the franchise tag road. You got the hardest thing to find, man. You've got a legitimate franchise quarterback. Just give him the money and keep him moving. Yeah, Jerry Jones likes to be two people. On the one hand, he is the guy who said last November, I think, I'm not known for having hand cramps when I sign checks. That's the Jerry that will obviously just give Dak Prescott market value. But the other Jerry is the guy who likes to talk about via his son Steven that there are other benefits to being a cowboy. And if he's going to play that card, the whole like, well, you can be a broadcaster, you can get other deals, 
That's not going to fly for a guy who led the second-best offense in the NFL last year. Hurry up and give him his money before Patrick Mahomes gets his and completely blows the salary structure out the window. If I have a quarterback that I need to re-sign, my key thought is let's hurry up and do this before Kansas City does. Mm, and no franchise tag possibility to you because that, to me, seems give a nightmare him, also. Give him the money, man. Just give him. Honestly, if I'm Prescott and you franchise tag me, I'm not showing up. What you mm. going to do then? The number... 375. That's how many days Victor Oladipo was out of action. Last night he returned, hitting a three-pointer with 10 seconds left to force overtime, and the Pacers come from behind, win over the Bulls. Pablo, how seriously do you take the Pacers as contenders in the East now that he's back? I mean, they're a top-five team, and I have such respect for the Pacers. I had to do a lot of learning this morning about the organization because it turns out over the last 30 years, only the Spurs have more playoff appearances. So what they do organizationally, super impressive. What they're doing here organizationally in the present tense, super impressive. But I just can't think of this team as more talented and therefore better than like the Sixers. For I got to say, that was a lot of words to not give an explanation for you hating on the Pacers like this, right? They are, like, what, like, what is their record as of now, right? What are they, 31-15, and 15, somewhere around that range? Okay, they are tied with the Sixers with the same record. Yep. And now they're getting back one of the three or four best players in the conference. So do I think they are contenders to beat the bucks i would probably say not but when you start looking at that other group of teams that is in there i don't see any reason to put any of them over the paces as things stand so there are some complexities here though because the pacers over this last offseason had six free agents all six left so there are three rotation players plus oladipo who are the only holdovers from last year's team all of which is to say that the return of this guy, right, a guy with a really high usage rate, they're going to have to figure some stuff out as chemistry and X's and O's go because they have a kind uh, of weird Hold on now, hold on now, hold on now. X's and O's matter now. The thing is talent, right? Your big thing is get talent. You just brought in more talent. So him, Sabonis, and TJ Warren, right? You got a couple of guys that can get their own shots. Sabonis is putting up 18, 13, Surprising. And, about, and about five assists this year. The reality is you just don't want to acknowledge that this team might be better than the Sixers. I tell, just, me how, tell me how the X's and O's work to make those Sixers fit, right? Because we just talked about talent and you said the following names. Victor Oladipo, yeah. Sabonis, right? Right, right? right. But your and TJ right. Warren. Yeah, but your thing about Oladipo was we got to figure out the X's and O's. I have watched the Sixers for the last three years struggle to figure out what the X's and O's are going to be there and without Oladipo, they got the same record as those Sixers do. I just think we're downgrading what they are capable of doing and they have a good coach, which I cannot say about a few of these teams in the East. The number 10. That's where ESPN ranks Minnehaha Academy in their National High School Boys Basketball Rankings. That is, in fact, their name. Let's watch what happened on the opening tip of their last game. Yo. <laughs> this is in high school. Oh, no. Yo, I'd be damned if I got on the bus to have to go be a witness. Look, these poor kids on the other team. As soon as the green team got off the bus and watched that team get off their bus, you get back on your bus. Some one of those kids on the green team, their parents is calling for birth certificates. I've seen that green team <laughs> play many times in other uniforms. Many, many times. Highly questionable is coming up next. They're so small.